deserts of the American West are a great place to live, especially if you're a reptile. But it's not the case for all scaly creatures. For the type of species that are semi-aquatic, well, this place is downright inhospitable. Such is the case for our friends of the crocodilian persuasion. All right, I'm really excited today. I'm hanging out with Russ Johnson. This guy is a lot of fun, and you're going to see why. We're at the Phoenix Herpetological Society out here in Arizona. And today, we're going to feed some spectacle caimans, but we're also going to learn just about what you need to do to keep crocodiles in the desert. Not an easy feat. We'll be right back. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. All right, Russ, what are we up to, buddy? Okay, well, we're going to get in here and see how many people are hungry. We had a cool night last night, so some of these caimans are pretty dressed feeders, so what I'm going to have you do is I'm okay. going to have you going with the tongs. You got it. And uh, we'll start out with the first puck. Just, Just one bucket, bucket. Then. Well, I'm going to put in both. All right. And then I'm going to have you come here and see if, if they're not headed this way, then you and I will walk through it. Uh, the legs are going to go to the bigger ones, chop the parts of the smaller ones. Okay. So these two over here would be legs, so you're going to go over, right. head over to the side. That, first came in there that's one of the males here all right and they, these are spectacle caimans because yep. if you look at the ridges on those noses yeah, there. there's an alligator right behind it that okay. is Tupelo so. all right so here we go come on bub you hungry oh they maybe might not. not maybe come on Tupelo there, there you go all right a little injury there so let's give her a few pieces all right she's recovering from yeah, the, so uh, shoulder she, injury now she's gonna come over and see you she knows you got fine. the food that's fine come on now girl. you're gonna also you notice a couple of them are coming they're starting to you. walk over look at yeah, that yeah they know they know you've got food yeah. come on that's and she's girl. a good girl oh yeah these are good little oh, girls like she's not up Here now he might have changed his mind yeah you're, you're gonna wait. see if you know, he all of a sudden he woke up wait a minute now, now yeah, he's yeah. looking he's looking yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's not in the Mensa group, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> That's okay. awesome, man. Okay, let's give give uh, Tupelo some more because I want to make sure her shoulder's getting better. So uh, you know she's challenging that male. How did she uh, hurt her shoulder? She uh, evidently, I think one of the um, male came and decided he was going to try to breed her and she turned around and got into it with him and I think got a hold of his shoulder. Okay. Keep feet, keep feeding him, otherwise you're going to find out you yeah, need steel gonna go, toes. They're going to go real close. Yeah. Oh, that's definitely oh, a go. caiman. There's oh, a yeah. caiman. There you go. See, we're starting to get a little bit more exciting yeah, I'm here. I'm telling you, if I get bit, it's a caiman every time. They're so doggone fast. Yeah, they are fast. Yeah. You know, that's the funny thing with crocodilians. You know, the gators, they might be bigger, but they're yeah. a little bit more mellow yeah. as far as handling. The other thing that's interesting to note is, uh, you know, she's might be more active at a lower temperature than these guys? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, they, you know, the alligators can, can tolerate it where this pond is actually heated uh, in the winter because, you know, the Caymans, you know, they're Central yeah. South America. They're just not used to seeing that cold temperature, and we don't want them going belly up, so. How much, um, look at that incredible feed. Yeah. But how much do you want to feed one particular animal then? Oh, give, give, uh, those are small pieces. We'll give her like four or five pieces, oh. and then what we'll do is we'll tap her on the nose. There's a couple of that are interested. They just haven't quite got it together yet, so. Now, now see, did you see two plugs? Yeah. Get, get out, so Toot's ready for some more. She's ready for some more, all right. We'll go ahead and move this one away. All right, here you go, girl. That's nice, man. Yep, I'm going, I'm going. What do you think, man? You think I could volunteer out here or what? Oh, heck yeah. Your, your training curve would be extremely short. <laughs> All right, so what you awesome. and I are going to do is we're going to grab, uh, give, give Toop one more. Toop one more, you got it. For the uh, she's girls. getting VIP training yeah, she's, right now. Yeah, she's, uh, what yeah. is it, convalescing here? Yes, yeah, she is. But she's, that, and that's my wife's baby, so ah. we got to take her. So you grab that bucket. You, you and I are going to walk up this side okay. and head towards those others. All right. And don't worry, Tom, we will absolutely protect you. Yep. Just remember, Tom, you can't be the slowest guy in here. That's right. right. Okay, but now I want you to give Savannah a drumstick. Savannah gets a drumstick? Yep. Savannah. All right. our, the other baby that was raised with Tupelo. Then a small piece for this one. Here you go. You hungry? Maybe not. Ah, there, there you go. You go. Okay, this one, a small it's piece. A small piece. Now, you, and then Romulus is going to come over. He's going to need a drumstick. Come on. Come on. Now I got a question. Oh, yeah. We're about to be surrounded behind on both sides here. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't. You Where should, should I be? Behind, behind us. No, I'll, I'll keep an eye on you. I'll keep an eye on you. There okay. you go. Okay, How about the guys coming in behind us right now? Nah, there's no. Nah, you're okay. No, no. Now who's this? This, this is Romulus. Romulus. That is Good name. one of the three alligators. He actually came to us from um, uh, Silver Springs Attraction. Oh wow, that's uh, when we got me. the crocodiles. Unfortunately. Uh, 
these two little girls that did the interactive pool, they let down big crocodile tears. All the alligators were going to go to Alligator Adventure, which you know is a uh, fantastic love place. Love that place. And you guys have seen they, that video? They wanted them to um, uh, go into an education program, and they, they know we do it so uh, Romulus and them. Okay, so let's start moving up a little right, bit. Let's do it. And what right, we're going to do... Hold on one second, Russ. I, just oh, have, I, I, I should have you know that Tom... Tom, I'm good. Tom, I'm are you good. okay, Tom? I'm okay. I'm you okay. You sure? Tom, I, I have just... not lost a, a cameraman now in two weeks. <laughs> Look at that. Two weeks, no yeah. deaths. Awesome. Okay. Listen, I so, just noticed that we're really not outnumbered. That's not all I'm not noticing. Not. Yeah, this is what the stick's for. <laughs> yeah, no worries. All right, we got this little one, but I want yeah, to draw yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. Come on. You can do it. Yeah, now you got to remember that uh, they, there are yeah. no manners here. That's right. There they go. There you go. That's who I wanted to have. You to get that other one. I got to tell you, Russ, I'm doing a better job feeding here than I did at Alligator Adventure. <laughs> because I, we, I could not get the timing of the croc biscuit into the mouths yeah. of the gators, man. Yeah. I was not good now, at all. We don't use a lot of croc biscuit. We do that as a supplement. Uh, right. And it's, it's uh, the, the croc chow and uh, the uh, black caimans like it and okay. some of the smaller species do. This one, no nos. We'll, th we'll take a. Yeah, that one's good. Okay. They are pretty well behaved. I mean, we are in. Yeah, a, but uh, you got to remember, they're still a little bit cool. No <laughs> nose here. Decided to challenge one of the bigger males here, and actually had the front of his nose torn off. We oh found boy. it at the bottom of the pond. Oh. And that's chicken blood. That's not him. Okay. And you guys will also notice you're going to see a little bit of. Um, you're going to see a little bit of nipping. The oh, crocs yeah. will, the gators, and excuse me, caiman will nip each other. Yeah. And when they do that, that's just gator uh, crocodilian talk. Okay. So let's see. We're just, we're just setting your place at the table. That's it. This is great, man. My goodness. How many are in this enclosure, Russ? There's 16 came and then three alligators. So sure uh, as good. Tom said, he uh, he feels like the uh, wagon train surrounded by the uh, warring tribe of Indians attacking it. Now talk to me a little bit about, you know, how difficult is it? You have 22 species of crocodilian here. What are the challenges that you uh, have to deal with living in such a place where the extremes in temperature? Well, well uh, our, uh, our biggest thing we have to worry about is, is summer. You know, the uh, crocs uh, technically can start stressing at about 93 degrees. Wow. And so we're 116, 120 degrees. What, what happens is uh, you're going to notice around here there's sprinklers uh, on, on top of all the enclosures, and it's not for the grass. Mm. It's actually for, uh, watch yourself. Yeah, yeah. I it's just, actually, that's okay. it's actually that was for, uh, it's actually for cooling the ground down. So what we'll do, depending on the temperature that day, it may rain in these pens four or five times, and that's to keep the ground temperature around uh, around 80 degrees. Wow. Uh, in the summer or in the winter, we have to heat the water for the crocodiles and the caimans because if you remember, they're from a temperate climate. They're not going to see cold weather. We don't have to do that with the alligators. So gotcha. uh, it's a challenge. And then we hang a lot of shade cloth in the winter. I mean. The, this whole pond is covered, this whole pond is covered. So you, you'll see 20 by 20 foot tarps. Uh, we create a lot of artificial sh shade. And then uh, depending on the temperature that they, we set the timers on how many times it's gonna rain. It may rain every three hours in here. Now I can't imagine what your power bill is like. Yeah, I was uh, just gonna ask. In, that the, in the winter, it goes between eight and nine thousand dollars a month, and we don't even get a thank you uh, note from the power company. Do you <laughs> so. And so you guys are a nonprofit, and That's you great. operate completely on donations. Uh, donations, we get some grants. We do corporates. Uh, corporate entities uh, uh, pay us to come out. Schools pay us for assembly money. Right. Uh, and we do tours here. Uh, the the cool. difference between us and the zoo is your tours are guided. There's no free flow in here, so uh, we schedule the tours, and uh, we're also a big proponent of some of the animals being interactive uh, with with the public. And of course, we're talking about safe animals. Okay. But um, uh, you know, and I think it, it with kids, it actually makes them ask more uh, questions, and a kid will remember the answer to their question because it's something they want to know. So it's a great education tool. Yeah, definitely. Um, People want to hold a small alligator or something else like this, and, and you know, so we'll tape the mouth or something else like just so they can get a feel for feel it. Feel for it, yeah. And you know, uh, just feel into physiology. It, it, it just, it just, you know, sets in stronger as far as uh, reinforcing what we're talking about the physiology. And then it still uh, evokes a lot of questions and when they get hands on, and all of a sudden they become more relaxed. How long have you been interested in crocodilians and reptiles in general? What's well, your story, Russ? I, I caught my first snake when I was four, so I've been hooked since then. I've actually um, w w kept snakes f f for a very long time, and then when I was younger, I actually got to work with uh, some caimans and alligators in Los Angeles when I was going to school, and, and I fell in love with the dinosaurs. Yes. And so, uh, you know, from that standpoint, it, it's been a great thing for me. Um, uh, Daniel, my curator and, and uh, business partner here, he uh, 
it was a quick study. He, he loves turtles and tortoises and lizards. But you know, uh, the challenges is, is uh, you'll see one pen that's completely arid, maybe set up for a lizard, desert lizard. But the pen that right next to it might be completely full of foliage because they need uh, high uh, bush content, high right. humidity type yeah. situation. So. And so a lot of the animals may be unwanted pets, Absolutely. confiscations, uh, very similar to you know what I do back out in Florida. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's why I always try and stress for you folks at home, you can love these animals fine, but don't just buy something because it's cute. Don't just buy something and treat these animals like collector's items, like baseball cards. They're not. They're living at organisms, and this is what happens. People like Russ have to set things up uh, for unwanted animals, and I mean, that's you, not always a good thing for you the You species. can end up loving these things to death, is what exactly. happens, right. and, that, and that's the unfortunate part. You know, um, before PHS came around, um, a lot of these animals had to be euthanized when they were brought here illegally. and. Um, uh, since we've got here, like I said, we've shipped out over 200 alligators, probably 60, 70 uh, crocs, and probably 30 to 40 caimans that would have been euthanized. And there's still, uh, crocodilian-wise, on the premises here, I think there's 117, 120. Wow. So I like how well behaved everyone is. I was just going to say, I don't understand how chill they are well, just being patient. There's, well. the, there's the great answer, how chill. you got to remember last night it got down to 60, so they're just now starting to warm up. Now, well, the reason that these guys will eat more so than the others is because the number of animals in here, they figure if I don't eat, I'm going to miss out. So what gotcha. we're going to do is we're going to move a couple around yep. and we're going to move over towards... Um, oh, are we going to go around this way? Yeah, we're going to go around that way. All right, so we will, so. in fact, be, we will in fact be uh, you know boxed in a little bit. But this will make things interesting. How many times have you been bit in the toe? In in here? Yeah. Uh, just maybe once or twice on the finger when I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> but I've got them all. They're just a little crooked. There you go. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. Come on. And these guys, remember, folks, those of you watching the show, you know that crocodilians are tough. Oh, yeah. He's giving them a love tap. That's how they talk to each other. And this is what we have to do in order to maintain a safe I want distance. You to see this little girl here will yeah, take one of the small pieces. Let's give her She's a one of the shyer ones, so All right. uh, you, you have to approach her. I'm good with the chicks, man. There you Maybe go. not. Well, now. <laughs> Hold on. You should, you Shouldn't have said that. Yep. Now try toss it next to her. There you go. Uh, well, somebody will pick it up. Somebody will pick that All right, up. We're going to work around and you're going to feed these came in the water. You got to remember really some of these awesome. guys if are you just can. so shy that they get very nervous. This is just, uh, for me, to get in here and work with you, I love to be able to work hands-on and see how you guys are doing things in a different part of the world. And, and we yeah. do it different than other people, yeah. and, and, they, and they may not agree with, but our animals are successful. And, and two, I'd, I'd like to give credit to our volunteers. You know, uh, people yeah. volunteer with dogs and cats Absolutely. and mammals, that's a little bit easier. But get people to uh, volunteer with crocodiles and <laughs> snakes and lizards, that, that takes a different person, well, and you know, that's a labor of love. Right, and you know, you mentioned something that I would like to stress uh, a little bit earlier when we were going through the tour. You kind of mentioned um, when you get people, like there are a lot of people that want to work with these animals, yeah. but they're a little cowboy, I cocky. suppose. Cocky. A little cocky. They think they know more than they do. Um, what worries you? Uh, how do you gauge who's ready to uh, step up and start working with crocodilians or venomous snakes? Well, you know, it, it, first of all, you know, you're going to start out just like everybody else. You're going to be cleaning pens like I do or something mm -hmm. like tortoises, uh, benign lizards and snakes, things like that. Right. And then we're going to see how you act around them. If you're acting cocky and, and turning your back and animals are getting loose on you, then we've got an accident waiting to happen. Uh, so, uh, and then, you know, uh, the ones that I told you that uh, really bother me, oh, I'm not afraid to work with venomous snakes or crocodiles. I ask them, have you ever done it? No, but I've seen it on TV. I'm not afraid. Well. Fear to a, a a little bit of fear of being bitten is a wise thing. Yeah, I think it so. keeps you on your toes. You can't become complacent. So, uh, you know, the few times that I've been nipped is is I made a, a mental mistake, wasn't paying attention, and you know it's nothing serious. You know, on the crocodilians, this mm -hmm. type of situation. You can remember, uh, you know, our snakes. If you're working in the venom room, and there's only four of us that, that are allowed in there. Uh, yeah. uh, it's because they've cleared an internship and you know the guy's been working for very a long time. To do and that. very mature attitudes. Gotcha. Very mature. Gotcha. So we're well, gonna get let's try and throw this, should I try and throw this one near no, her or no? Yeah, you could try that. Let's try it again. Just, try it again. Oh, That's okay. God. Grab, oh, grab, no. grab, grab right. a drumstick for, for silver. She's just not hungry. I don't think she got warm enough yet. Now silver's gonna hit you hard. Okay. So go from the side. You had me anticipating it. Yep. Come on, Silver. Come on, Bob. I think I upset right. him. I'll be all right. Get rid of this, get rid of this guy. Go. go ahead. Take that, please. Grab another. Grab another. I'm going to get it right on in there. There you go. 
There you go. Whoa, that yeah, was a nice yeah. hit. <laughs> and, and, you <laughs> yeah. know, believe it or not, I go through a pair of tongs uh, bet. about every two weeks. Uh, you know, those are just cast, and, and uh, you get them. Oh, Sylvia, you dropped. There you go. Pick it up, buddy. There you go. <laughs> he needs a little help. Well, his problem is he's, he's just a little bit um, cool yet. So, come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, not the stick. <laughs> Here, buddy, take this Here, one. Try another one. Silver. Are you all right? I'm going to... Yeah, see if, get, see if you can give another one. Let me see if I get this right in there. There you there go. There you go. There you go. Helping them out. There you go, Nice Silver. job. That's my boy. Here's a couple more. Yeah. Make sure they're well fed. And you like to feed off everything that are in these buckets? Yeah, we, if, we, if we don't feed it off here, we got other guys that we can go feed it off to. So, and then we've got some over here that haven't gotten it yet. So okay, we're going to... let's do it. We're going to uh, grab a... If you grab one... I can grab them both. Okay. We might have to move Silver unless you'd say yeah, it's safe for me to step around him. Would you do me a favor? Let Tom go first. Sure. Tom, be very careful. Now get over there. There you go. Silver's right. actually a mellow dude. It's just, you know, yeah. when, you, when you cut off somebody's foot, you, you always wonder, are they going to be mad at you? Oh, yeah, you know what? That's actually, we didn't mention that. Um, yeah, it came in with a bone disease. Okay. And, and it was a previous injury when he was in Canada, and they thought it had stopped. And it actually blew up here, so we had to actually have the foot amputated. Right. And um, uh, he's done very well. Uh, he was back in the water the same day of the amputation. Wow. Uh, well, it was going to be 100 and some odd degrees, so, so if we didn't put him in water, off. he's going to die. But if you think about it, these guys get legs and tails torn off, All and, the and they go, they're in the swamps, and, and the granulation takes place. They're immune to it. I talked to uh, the vet, Sam Seashell. Yeah. And Sam said, Sam. no, I'll get, get him. Get, Sam's, get him in water. Get him in water. He says, the animal lives leave. in water. He says, if you keep him out of water at 100 degrees, you might as well just put him down. So, hmm. Well, there you go. He has an interesting story. Come on. Holy smokes. Come on. There you go. I didn't notice a lot of our extremely white teeth. Yeah, that's uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, you do those uh, crest white strips on? You do the crest white chips? Those are really, I find they're good. They don't do well for me. <laughs> now, that, that's good, healthy eating is what's causing their well, dentation to be good in the water. water. We, don't, we don't allow the tannins to build up. And let's face it, the teeth come in white, but you know they're always in stained water and teeth are porous. So yeah. they grab it on there and they're either covered with algae or tannins. So. You know, all the tongs are, are filtered, so. It's an art to getting these guys it fed is. with tongs, man. You know, because they have a tendency to not grab the whole thing and it knocks it out of your hand. Yeah. Come on. You can see that sideways hit. That, that's uh, that's how come you always get tagged by one of these, because uh, they're so quick on the left and right that uh, if you're going to get hit that, you know, by one of these, it, they're the ones that uh, you can be four or five inches away and all of a sudden, bang. But, you know, like two full of Savannah over here, they're just big old puppy dogs. They, you know, but being an alligator, you know, I would not do that to one of them because they turn around and grab a finger. Now, the flat, you've been around them quick enough to know that yeah. you, 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 one of their favorite meals is a finger sandwich. I'll tell you what, man. Did we get everybody who needs to be uh, fed in here yeah, fed? We're going to go on down this way. And okay. what we can do is, if you want, I've got um, some for the female Cuban. And then, um, if you're up to it, um, I know the New Guinea male let's is hungry. It. So, let's, let's do, do that. Let's so talk we'll, a little bit about yeah. them as well. All right, so this is a whole other animal. Yep, yep. This, this is, is uh, you know, we got some at Kyle's place, good old crocodile Kyle. Yep. You guys have seen us capture Cuban crocodiles, bring them down to Kyle's. Well, they have one hell of a feed response and they're smart. Yep. And we were talking a little bit about how size really doesn't matter too much with crocodilians. These aren't the biggest, but they are certainly notorious for being some of the baddest yeah. uh, rept uh, crocodilians on earth. Well, and you gotta remember, they have the ability to spring up with their front legs. Yeah. So, you know, a six foot croc could probably hit you in the chest if it was running at you. So, um, I've, I've worked with bigger ones before where you actually have a shield. And they'll come up and try to knock you down. Yeah. And that's not the position to be in with no a way. croc. I mean, you know, and they get some monsters. So. What do you want us to do right what now? What I want you to do is I've got some frosted rats here and I okay. uh, want you to, Come over here and give her a rat at a time. Let me get out of your way oh, here. All right, here we go. Uh, here we go. Okay, so we're not. We are going in. No, 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 no. You, you can, matter of fact, you can. Come on over here. Yeah, you can come over that. How many do you want to give her? Uh, give her about five. Okay. Go over here, baby. Now she's a petite ear, so unless she swallowed it, she won't take it. Okay. So it, it, and she prefers this to chicken. And as you can see, there's a chicken there right is a down chicken there, there that I got to go fish out. Which, to be honest with you, whole food is much better for them. We rotate okay. between meat and whole food. Um, we go down and buy about a thousand dollars worth of chicken, and then um, 
then the next time, you know, defrost rabbits and whole chickens, you know, I'm talking about somebody's chickens that had died or something right. else like that. Mice and rap and um, rats, things like this. So, you know, she's a good girl. Oh, and absolutely. again, oh, is that again the temperature? No, she, she's got when good she's temperament. Feeding, she's very good. Now, when you go in there sometimes, she'll, she'll give you a fit. And I, and I, it's not so much she's trying to keep you out. It could be that, you know, if you're not going to feed me, you can't come in here. Let me ask you this. Since we all know, or a lot of uh, crocodilian people know, that they can learn, they're oh, intelligent yeah. animals, the, the fact that you're feeding them off toms is probably a lot gentler and calmer than chucking the food over, right? Well, the, the problem she, is... She's waiting, though. Yeah, <laughs> if, if, yeah if, if the problem with... The, uh, That's five, by the way. Yeah, I'm going to take the toms here in a second. But, uh, the problem with... Um, Chucking it over, especially like in a king pond, the bigger one will dominate. Right. And so this, the, uh, you know, the reason that we we take this on is, come on, move, move, come on, come on. Uh, the reason we we uh, take th that tack is I want to make sure that the little ones actually get uh, their portion of the food. You know, this type of situation. No, I know you're not going to eat this, so don't lie to me. So. Wow. Yeah, so she's cool. Yeah, she is actually a really good girl. That's a well-behaved cute yeah, man. Yeah, she, well, yeah, but they, like I said, there's other days now when I go in there to trim the weeds out, she's going to tell me I can't go in there. Okay. Now what I want you to do with the remaining yep. rats is we're going to open up this one and uh, you're going to lay the rats up on the bank and then uh, they should come up a little bit later today and they'll eat it both the female and male. Okay. okay. The Temiskama. Yeah. So These guys are probably some of my favorite crocodiles. Yeah, they are really neat. Um, the female is the little one. That's a 2012 baby and then this is a 2009. So what I do when I come in is I tap on the concrete with the tongs and let okay, them go in here. Yeah. And then I come in here and I spread out the rats. Rats, rabbits, whatever. Now right What's now the they're going to back them, right? up. And just, yep, just put the rest of them, just spread them out. And then you and I will go on our merry way and, and go feed some other animals. All right. Spread them out pretty good. Okay. Because the female's a little bit shy, so if he's up here eating, she'll go to the opposite side. Give them a good... Yep. I prefer giving these guys... Uh, they probably get more whole food than any of the other species. Uh, the reason being is... is um, uh, the species watching. survival plan. They're excited because, you know, hopefully this male and female will, will be able to breed. It, and since they're starting off, we won't have an issue of introduction. Okay. Uh, they'll go, they'll probably be in this pond maybe through next year. Depends on the growth rate. And then what will happen is they'll go to a bigger pond and they'll go to that. I'm not going to move them into a huge pond overnight because the they little stretch. guys freak yeah. out. I mean, they, they like hiding and the male loves basking on the side and he's getting to the point where you can walk by the pond and he won't dive in the water. The female, That's she back and she just hits a mock one. Cool. And then the ultimate goal would be to produce offspring. Right. And then, yeah. let's, and then hopefully, you know, our genetics would go to work with some other genetics that uh, uh, some of the other SSP members have. Cool. You know, this type of situation. And don't get me wrong, I'm not a believer that genetics are an issue in crocodilians. They've been interbreeding for about 220 million years. Million years. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but um, um, that's my own belief, and you'll get some people that argue with you. But you know they have a finite amount of space they can move. It's not like mammals and birds where they can cover past exactly uh, amounts of room. So. Well, shoot, man, we're actually going to go on our merry way. But I think now's a good time for you guys to digest what we've been talking about. And don't worry, though. This is a pretty supersized episode of Camp Kennan. We're going to have more with Russ Johnson from the Phoenix Herb Society and in episodes to come. We're really excited to hang out with him. We learned a lot today. And I appreciate you taking the time. And I also appreciate you letting me come hang out with you and oh, get dirty. Oh, heck, fire. You know, you, you, know, you did great at the croc. How uh, can people help out? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we're a nonprofit. Our, our biggest uh, form of... Uh, Running this place is donations. We're tax deductible because we're nonprofit, uh, and you know, but we compete with mammals. And, you know, feathers and fur. Unfortunately, feathers and fur are menu item here. So uh, we're, uh, you know, uh, it takes people uh, a little while to get used to it. But once people come here, they're used to. Uh, they're very generous. Yeah. They really are. And a lot of these animals have specific stories. Well, I'll tell you what. We're uh, we're fans of all things scaly uh, on my channel. So where do, can they go to donate? Uh, Phoenix, phoenixherp.com phoenixherp.com guys go on out there and help out Russ keep these animals going and we'll see you real soon appreciate it man my pleasure